Ever wondered how airports manage to stay afloat amidst the chaos of departures and arrivals? Do they have a secret stash of gold hidden beneath the tarmac? Let's dive into the world of airport economics and uncover how these bustling hubs of travel actually earn their keep. Did you know that airports are like many cities with their own economy? From duty-free shopping to parking fees, they have a multitude of revenue streams that keep them soaring high. So get ready for a journey through the financial skies of airports. Airports are fascinating places, not just for the sheer number of people passing through, but also for the intricate web of businesses and services that operate within their boundaries. It's easy to take for granted the fact that airports are self-sustaining entities, generating their own revenue to cover the costs of operations and maintenance. But have you ever wondered exactly how they do it? In this video, we'll explore the various ways airports earn money. But first, we'll know about the history of airport financing, the complex processes involved, and even take a lighthearted detour to discuss the role of balloons in aviation history. By the end of this journey, you'll have a newfound appreciation for the financial wizardry that keeps airports running smoothly. Number one is passenger service charges. These are the primary sources of aeronautical revenue for airports. These charges are levied on each passenger departing from an airport and are indirectly included in flight tickets. The amount of these charges varies depending on the destination of the flight. Charges for domestic flights are generally lower, followed by regional flights, like intra-European Union or intra-ASEAN, with international passengers typically charge the highest rates. Governments often encourage airports to set lower fees for domestic flights to promote national connectivity. PSCs account for a significant portion of an airport's total aeronautical revenue, typically around two-thirds. However, this ratio can be slightly lower, ranging around 50% in some cases. The collected PSCs are a crucial source of income for airports, especially for small and medium-sized airports with limited international flights and connectivity. Number two is landing fees, which are charges paid by aircraft operators to an airport for landing their planes at that particular airport. The amount of landing fees varies based on several factors, such as the weight of the aircraft, the number of seats, the time of day, the aircraft's home airport, and the operator class. Some airports may charge higher fees for specific types of operators. The fees are typically calculated per 1,000 pounds of the aircraft's maximum gross landing weight. Landing fees are used by airports to cover the costs associated with maintaining and expanding the airport's infrastructure, including runways, taxiways, and aprons. Some airports use landing fees as a tool to attract more flights by keeping the fees low, while others, such as congested airports, can charge premium prices due to high demand. However, some airports, particularly general aviation airports, may not charge landing fees. Now we understand aircraft parking fees. These are the charges levied by airports on aircraft operators for parking their planes at the airport. The amount of parking fees varies based on the weight of the aircraft, the duration of parking, and whether the aircraft is parked inside a hangar or outside on the apron. Typically, fees are calculated per 1,000 pounds of the aircraft's maximum gross landing weight. Parking inside a hangar usually incurs higher fees compared to outside parking. Some airports offer free short-term parking for aircraft, while others may charge fees starting from the moment the aircraft is parked. Longer parking durations, such as overnight or extended stays, often incur higher fees. It's important to note that aircraft parking fees are separate from landing fees and are charged in addition to any landing fees. Now we come to the revenue generated from the retail and duty-free shops. Retail revenue includes income generated from various types of shops like fashion boutiques, electronic stores, bookstores, and convenience stores. These shops are typically operated by third-party concessionaires who pay rent to the airport for the lease space. The airport may also receive a percentage of the sales revenue generated by these shops. Duty-free shops offer tax-free products to international passengers who are departing or arriving at the airport. In recent years, airports have been focusing on enhancing the retail experience by introducing innovative concepts such as pop-up stores, theme shops, and interactive displays. These efforts aim to attract passengers, increase dwell time, 
and boosts spending in the retail areas. Car parking is another source of earnings for airports. It involves the provision of parking spaces for passengers, visitors, and staff, generating income through parking fees. Airports offer different types of parking options, including short-term, long-term, and economy parking, each with varying fees. The fees are typically calculated based on the duration of parking, with longer stays incurring higher charges. Some airports also offer premium parking services, such as valet parking or reserve parking, for an additional fee. Car parking revenue is an important contributor to an airport's non-aeronautical income, particularly for airports with high volumes of passenger traffic. Airports have been focusing on enhancing the parking experience by introducing innovative concepts such as automated parking systems and real-time parking availability updates. These efforts aim to improve the convenience and efficiency of parking, increase customer satisfaction, and boost revenue. Rental income is another way of airport earning. This revenue stream is derived from leasing out space within the airport premises for various purposes, such as offices, retail outlets, hotels, entertainment venues, and conference centers. The diversification of rental income sources helps airports reduce their dependence on aeronautical revenue and passenger-related activities, making them more resilient to fluctuations in air traffic and economic conditions. By offering a mix of commercial spaces and services, airports can cater to the needs of passengers, visitors, and local communities, enhancing the overall airport experience and generating additional revenue streams. Now moving to the ground transportation services. These are another key source of non-aeronautical revenue for airports, encompassing a range of services provided to passengers and visitors for moving to and from the airport. These services include taxi stands, rental car facilities, shuttle services, and public transportation options operating within the airport premises. Airports generate revenue from ground transportation services through various means, such as licensing fees, rental agreements with service providers, and commissions on transactions made within the airport transportation network. By offering convenient and efficient ground transportation options, airports enhance passenger experience and generate additional income to support their operations and development initiatives. When you reach any airport, you see a lot of advertisements over there, and it is a significant source of non-aeronautical revenue for airports involving the sale of advertising space within the airport premises to businesses and brands looking to reach a captive audience of passengers and visitors. Airports offer various advertising opportunities, including digital screens, banners, posters, and interactive displays strategically placed in high traffic areas like terminals, gates, and baggage claim areas. Revenue from advertising contributes to the overall financial sustainability of airports. Even hotels tie up with the airports, hotel and conference facilities are important earning sources for airports, providing passengers, visitors, and local businesses with accommodation and event spaces within the airport premises. Airports often lease space to hotels and conference centers, offering convenient options for travelers and event organizers. Revenue from hotel stays, conference bookings, and event rentals contributes to diversifying the revenue streams and enhancing the airport's appeal as a multifunctional hub for business and leisure activities. Real estate development, yes, you heard it right. It is also a vital source of revenue for airports, involving the leasing or development of airport land for commercial, residential, or mixed-use purposes. Airports utilize their land assets to generate income through long-term leases, property sales, and joint ventures with real estate developers. You have definitely noticed the scanning of luggage in airports. These baggage handling fees charges are levied by airports on passengers for the handling and transportation of their checked luggage. The amount of baggage handling fees depends on the weight, size, and number of checked bags. Passengers may be required to pay additional fees for overweight, oversized, or excess baggage that exceeds the airline's allowance. Baggage handling systems are complex conveyor networks that transport checked luggage from ticket counters to aircraft and vice versa. They employ advanced technologies like barcode scanning, RFID tracking, 
and explosive detection systems to ensure the efficient and secure movement of bags. Chapter Conclusion And there you have it, folks. The not-so-secret world of airport earnings is laid bare for your amusement and edification. If you've enjoyed this journey through the financial clouds of airports, give us a like for the hard work behind this informative exploration. Don't forget to subscribe for more engaging videos and be part of our growing community of curious minds. Until next time, keep your feet on the ground and your head in the clouds. Happy travels.